And of course, this is really exciting because the earlier on we see organic molecules in the universe, these are the building blocks of life and could help explain how complex organisms like we have here on Earth might have formed in the universe. Not only do we see the most distant galaxies, but we see the most distant quasar. Quasar, of course, is a supermassive black hole that is actively feeding on material, so much material that it can outshine the rest of the galaxy. The most active time in the universe is known as cosmic noon. And this is a couple of billion years after the Big Bang when the star forming regions in these galaxies were actively forming new stars, planets, and the supermassive black holes at the hearts of these galaxies were siphoning in material from the galaxy around it and shining these bright quasar lights out into the universe. But once again, it looks like the universe was able to get into this activity a lot earlier than anyone was expecting. And so we saw this quasar called Sears 1019. And it only contains about 9 million times the mass of the sun, so like twice the mass of the supermassive black hole at the heart of the Milky Way. But we're seeing it just 570 million years after the Big Bang. And J-Lib saw other supermassive black holes a few hundred million years later, but some of which had already gained a billion times the mass of the sun or more. And so once again, how did these black holes pull together so much material so quickly in the universe? 